did all life that we see occur naturally or was there some entity that created them? First to discuss what does it mean to be naturally? The kind of reductive materialist answer is that something that is natural does not have a creator, but that itself is showing a kind of uh, atheistic bias, almost you could say, because what can be more when a mother and father has a child, is that natural or not? But the child has a parent. So God creating everything is a natural process because God is our eternal father. The Bhagavad Gita teaches this. Aham bija pradapita, pita hamasya jagato, pita means the father. So he says, I am the supreme father. But when a father has a child, is it a natural process or not? So I would like to address that point to start is that creation is natural because it's the root of everything. A flower does not bloom without a natural process of creation. A fruit does not ripen on the branch of a tree without a natural process of creation. So we understand that God is the entity that creates everything and it is a natural process. Just as a son has a father, the world has its own creator. And that is described to be the supreme conscious entity. Para Brahman. We understand that consciousness is superior to dull matter. The higher principle, it's actually described in the Bhagavad Gita as para prakriti and apara prakriti. The higher potency and the lower. Material existence being of the lower nature, spiritual existence being of the higher nature. So the soul itself is described to be an energy, part and parcel of God. God, you can understand him, it's described in one of our Vedic scriptures, the Brahma Sanghita, as the original flame. And from that original flame or candle, all other candles are lit. That flame's essence being one of consciousness, existence and bliss. Sat Chid Ananda in the Sanskrit terms. So on one hand, we can say everything is in an eternal cycle, as our other venerable speakers have mentioned, that what has a beginning has an end. This is in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, Nasato Vidite Bhavo. So what has a beginning has an end. But in our understanding, that one beginning and, uh, is the start from a previous end, meaning is an eternal cycle called Sangsara. And there is a higher realm in which there is no actual beginning and end. It's all eternal present. It's an eternal time. In this world, we see kind of the transformation and transmigration of life and these cycles. But ultimately, as we understand it, there is a creator. The Vedas teach Nityo Nityanam Chaitanas Chitananam Eko Bhunam Yo Vidadati Kamam. There is one original being from whom all beings manifest. That being is the original consciousness from which all consciousness manifests. Therefore, it's described to be like the tree of existence. And all entities are parts of that. But ultimately, we are part of that supreme whole. Another example is given of the sun, the sun body, and then the photons of light emanating from the sun. The sun body of the aggregate of all consciousness, the supreme universal source of everything is God. And we souls are simply finite part and parcel of that supreme entity, like the photons of light connected to the sun. So this is one of our understandings. Our understanding is that entity has different features. Brahman means the universal effulgence, the spirit. Paramatma means the God residing within the heart, the inner witness, the conscience. And para Brahman, Bhagavan means the personal feature who we can develop a loving relationship with. So these are some of the understandings of God. How much time do I have left? Uh, you have about a minute, maybe. maybe so a minute. to go over, we'll, I wanted to speak about the different levels of the elements of nature, but I think that goes better with a later question. But the idea of, again, everything to even say it has a beginning point means it has to have an end point. So in our Vedic understanding, life does not cease to exist at any time. Bhagavad Gita says, Nasato vidyate bhavo na bhavo vidyate sata. For that which is eternal, there is no end. But that which is manifest in this world has a beginning, a middle, and an end. So the idea is that it comes from the end. At the end, it goes to an unmanifest state called the pradhan. And then at the time for creation to occur again, it comes back into the manifest state. 
So in the Bhagavad Gita, there's a verse, avyaktadini bhutani vekta madhyani bharata, avyaktani dananyeva tatraka paridhevana. Everything comes into being from an unmanifest state into the manifest state where we are all here interacting with each other, and then it goes again into an unmanifest state from which it again arises, going, you know, to external appearance to disappearance. 